Number five. Five, Back to the Future 3. Back to the Future, probably my favorite mov movie series of all time. About a teenager and a scientist who travel through time in a DeLorean. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? But in this case, I'm referring to the third movie, where they travel back to 1885 in the West. Also referring to the steam locomotive they used, the 460. That was a very nice touch to the old west theme considering railroads were still in development during the time and it was a very accurate locomotive for the time as well. It makes a pretty big part when it has to push a DeLorean fast enough so Lo Marty can return to the future. Marty and Doc have to pose as robbers in order to get the locomotive. When robbing the train, the engineer asks why it's just a locomotive and Doc's excuse is It's a science experiment! Not only that, but does he say the one line everyone says when they blow a steam locomotive whistle. Later on, after they get the locomotive, Doc Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd, developed a special wood to allow the locomotive to go fast enough to push the DeLorean up to 88, so the lo locomotive's boiler wouldn't explode from the pressure. I specifically liked it when each log blew, the smoke changed colors corresponding to the color of the log, and started coming out of the rivets in the smokestack on the locomotive, kind of to show that it's under pressure. The track that ran to push the DeLorean up to 88 was eventually coming to a dead end. Then the line was a bridge in, still in development, but, but the bridge it was there in present time. But to cap off the scene, DeLorean hits 88 and Doc abandons the locomotive to save his love, Claire Clayton. Needless to say, the train crashed. It plummeted down the cliff and exploded. Pretty abrupt ending there. It was a very well executed crash scene though. But then we meet up with Marty, who is now back in the present and still on the tracks. But as soon as he's relieved that he's back, an oncoming freight destroys the DeLorean. A sad ending for the car, unfortunately. Later, after he goes to get his girlfriend, he returns to the tracks, knowing he'll probably never see Doc again. But then out of nowhere, BAM! Doc comes back, and has re resurrected the steamer into a new time machine. Probably one of the coolest things I've seen. Oh yeah, in the end, it can fly like DeLorean too. I know, flying train. Crazy. Yeah. But then the train flies off into the camera and finishes the movie. So the train sits at number 5 for the use of the train in this movie, in the awesome crash scene, and the fact that it's now the new time machine. Number 4. Number 4. Lionel Train Town 3D. Another famous train thing from my childhood. This game was quite literally in my childhood. I had a lot of fun with this game. I mean, there were many tr fun train challenges to do, whether it be switching in yards or making sure trains don't run into each other, which was also fun. The, the game also had a lot of cool maps with it. Some industrial, realistic looking ones, and a lot of fictional ones. For example, there was a layout in a playroom where it drove on the floor between the guitars, toy boxes, chairs, etc. Which is probably one of my favorite maps. The trains they used were also nice being a cool looking steam locomotive, a UP SW switcher, a trolley, a lot of them cool looking freight cars and passenger cars, and of course one of Lionel's most famous trains, the Santa Fe F3. Also I enjoyed the soundtrack of this game. To be specific, the, name, the main theme. It has always been stuck in my head ever since I've heard it. Classic. Not only that, the intro was really cool where they used real footage of Lionel trains. One f feature I liked about this game is where you, you can just go into a playroom and just build your own tracks. They had some already preset industries, but you had to build the track itself and they would give you trains to hook up and switch around and stuff, which was also fun. Number 3. Emperor North, number 19. 
For those who haven't heard of the Emperor Noir, it's mainly about hobos hopping trains during the Depression. Hey. A number one is our main character from the movie, played by Lee Marvin, which he has to ride a train into Portland without getting killed by the conductor of the train, Shaq, who's played by Ernest Bornheim. Shaq hates it when bums ride his train for free, and when he finds one, he gets very violent about it. It sets foot on my train. I'd hold him out and shake him to death like a snake. The movie is based to more based around the hobos themselves, but the main setting was the railroad, and one of the thing settings was number 19, a small two-way tomb Mikado. The contents of number 19 was also like a setting, the train that fights on the train, and many scenes were also shot from the train. Like when A number 1 was riding underneath the train with a tag along named Cigarette. Not only that, in the beginning, A number 1 and Cigarette were trapped inside of a cattle car, and Lee Marvin's only way to escape was burning the car down. The railroad tower operator notices this, and the yard goes into a frenzy to put out the car. He escapes while his cigarette is ca was captured, but later on he gets away. Another scene I enjoyed was the almost head-on collision scene, where the 19 was running late and had to make up for lost time. With some hobos at the track through a switch that sends the 19 into a siding. The train hurries back onto the main before a fast mail comes to the junction. The trains nearly collide, and the scene definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. So number 19 sits on my list at number 3 because it's one of my favorite movie trains and also had a great whistle. It's not a place. It's a prize. Number 2. Number 2. Unstoppable. Unstoppable is probably my favorite train movie of all time. It is rare to see a movie like this because not a lot of movies are involved around runaway trains. The trains used, however, were very nice. The trains, also like number 19, play, almost play as their own characters. Triple Seven, the runaway train, being the main antagonist of the movie, while Chris Pine and Denzel Washington in 1206 are with the protagonist. I also love the paint scheme they use. The red and the yellow logo made, me, made the locomotive look almost like a Santa Fe war bonnet. There are also some cool trains that appear in the background of the movie. When showing Fuller Yard, you can see a line of Union Pacific SD90s, or it looks like SD70s. And when they walk into the dispatch room, through the door, you can see a Wheeling and Lake Erie SD40-2. Now, unfortunately, I do not have footage of these scenes being, of the trains being shown, but next time you watch a movie, just be on the lookout for them. Not only that, they make, they make the train seem like it's almost alive, and they add roaring sound effects to some of the scene. I also enjoyed some cool effects they used, like when the pair of SD40s derailed and they exploded. I also enjoyed the scene when 777 hit the horse trailer, it shows how much power a roaring freight train could have. And also, the famous Stanton Curve scene, where the train is literally on its side. It's hanging onto the track for dear life. A really cool effect, I think. But Chris Pine hops on tri aboard 777 and makes the train come to a stop. I like the epilogue where it makes talk where it talks about the characters in the movie do for a living after the incident. Uh, the guy from My Name's Earl made the train in the wrong way. Works at McDonald's now. Now before we get to the number one spot, here are some honorable mentions that did not make it to the list. Well, you coming? Where? Why to the North Pole, of course! This is the Polar Express! And now, on to the number one spot. Number one. 
Number one. Number one, Galaxy Railway's big one. Yep, this is number one. Now, for some of you that who haven't heard of the show, the title says it all. It's about trains in space. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This is probably one of my favorite shows of all time. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not in the anime. I liked the show at first for the obvious reason, but I came to like the story after I watched more of it. Anyway, the Galaxy Railways was an anime made back in 2003. It's about a galactic railway system that connects planets throughout the galaxy. Since it's taking place in the future, there's a lot of futuristic looking bullet trains. Except for this one. This is Big One, and Big One is based off a of Union Pacific Big Boy. Big One is an SDF space defense force train. The SDF is, a ra is, li is like railway police that protects the railways and galaxy from terrorists and other threats along the railways. Yeah, so this train has guns. Shield captain, pulse cannons ready to fire. On my mark, fire! Which, in my opinion, was freaking cool. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen an idea do like this. When I first saw this, my mind would just explode. I mean, who would have the idea to put trains in space and then have them fight stuff? It's basically almost like Star Wars, but you place all the spaceship trains. It's really freaking cool. Big One, though, is the only one that is really a recognizable train in the show. Except for Galaxy Express 99, which is an older show before Galaxy Railway, which is made by the same creator. Galaxy Express 999 is based off a Japanese National Railway C-62 steam locomotive. And eventually there was a crossover season called Letter from the Abandoned Planet. The show overall was good, it had a nice storyline, it was about 26 episodes, and the last episodes were that big multi-part episode a show would normally have to wrap up the show. The show overall had three seasons, but I personally liked season one the best, mainly because it was the only one that was English dubbed. And I also think it had a better storyline. So the story was good, the characters were memorable, and Big One is badass, so Galaxy Railways is number one on my list. So, that was my top 10. What did you guys think? What's your top 10? Comment below what you think should have been on the list or what you think or what are your top 10 trains. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you like. This is TrainGeek24 signing off. Peace!